Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we're going to look at Kato, which engine should we use? If you are new to Kato, which engine should you choose? And uh, should you keep the configuration inside the code or should you use the Hocon file? Let's get right into it. So, uh, first of all, you should make sure that you actually have latest and greatest uh, Gradle uh, version. That means right now it says 7.2. You should also uh, make sure that you have the uh, the the JDK 17. I'm using the uh, the Sulu distribution, and of course you can use um, you can use the SDK man. That's what I'm using right here. Then you can list your Gradle versions, and you can also just install the newest version and set that as default. And the same with um, Kotlin. You need Kotlin, of course. I have one five uh, thirty one right now there, and Java, you should have, um, yeah, you can use uh, version 17, and I, um, I've i just never found any uh, problems using the solo distribution, so that, that's why I use that, but of course you can use any of the other distributions as well. Let us get back to the question, because it is actually quite a good question. When you create a new Kato application, you will probably do it through the IntelliJ uh, start, start New Project Wizard, or you would use um, the website where you can also create a new a new site and I'll also show you how to do that. We have that right here. Here we have a start. Here we have it start.kator.io. Here we can actually create um, a new project if you want to. First you can give it some kind of name right here. Then you can add the plugins that you need to use. Maybe you want to add some basic authentication. Maybe you want to add some routing. I've already added that, but that's fine. And then at some point, then you want to, um, that's actually another question we need to answer before that. Uh, let me just check that. That's right here. Adjust project settings right here. You need to choose whether you want to use uh, Gradle Groovy or Gradle Kotlin. Of course, if you're using Gator, of course, you will choose Gradle Kotlin there. That uh, gives itself because the reason why you you, are, you, you, are, you use Kator is actually because you like the Kotlin language. Maybe you are an Android developer that wants uh, a backend. And then, of course, you uh, an obvious choice could be Kator. And then you choose the version right here. Right now it's version 1, 3, uh, 163, which is the newest one right there. And then we have two, uh, uh, then we have two options right here. We have which engine should we use and which uh, should we place the configuration inside code or inside Hocon file. And spoiler alert, if you don't want to watch more of the video, then the spoiler alert, choose Netty and choose the Hocon file. Okay, and now let me explain to you why. First of all, uh, first of all, Tomcat and Yeti, those servers are to be, are to be considered, uh, those are web servers. And uh, the most used server right now is Tomcat because it's supported and used by default by Spring. Um, but Yeti and Tomcat, th those are traditional web servers, and th that means that they will not be as efficient. And um, in the, in the old days, they were, they were you would actually get a new thread for each uh, request, and then that thread would be blocked by that uh, that request until the response has been given to that request. Um, so that is how the web server um, is, is 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 usually um, that's how it works. While um, while Netty is actually a, a neo, it's a, it's a neo server, neo framework, and neo stands for non-blocking uh, input output uh, framework, and it supports a lot of protocol. And I found a cool drawing that I want to show you right here. This is from Netty Home. Here you can see that it supports HTTP web sockets and it supports uh, yeah it supports a lot of protocols. HTTP tunnel, socket and data, yeah, it, it, it's, yeah, that's the transport services, but the protocols, uh, you can see them in, in the right side right there, in the yellow and yellow boxes, Google uh, protobuf, yeah, the GCIP compression, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it is very, very lightweight. It's also very, very fast, and um, it just works. It's very easy to use also. So, uh, and it is, it is also the default choice if you do not change your Indian settings when you're creating your application for the first time. Then Kato has something they call CIO, which is something with coroutines, um, so with something with coroutines input output. And let me just show you the, the only the, the problem with that right now is that it only supports HTTP one and not HTTP two, for instance. 
um and in especially in the in the in the in the in the old days in the older days then there was a lot of errors in the cio because it is kind of an experimental server that they created um at least a couple of years ago but now it is more mature, but I would still not. If it was, yeah, I would, I would still recommend and use uh, Netsy. I'm, I, whenever I see this box right here, I am not in doubt. Netsy is the choice right here. When you come to configuration, you can place configuration inside a Hokan file and inside code. I would never, uh, and again here the choice is obvious one to me. I would use the Hokan file, and the reason why I want to use the Hokan file, and the uh, that is that uh, if 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 you want to have different profiles uh, through your in my environment stack, then um, then you cannot change your settings that easily if the code is uh, if your configuration is inside the code. Of course, you can also place it inside code. You can also make you can also taste on which environment you're running in in there, and then you can uh, run different pieces of code. But if you have a lot of different configuration for each environment, then I just think it gives a much better, better overview to have your uh, configuration inside a Hokan file. And that be, it's, if you're used to Spring, then you usually have your application.properties file or your application.yaml file. Um, here you would just have an application.conf file. So if you come from, from the Spring world, then you would definitely also want to choose the Hikon file. But if you are a hardcore Kotlin developer, then you can just as well put it in. You can put just just as well put it in code if you want to, but in my opinion, it looks better inside the 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 Hokan file, and it's easier to have multiple environments. Gives a better overview, and that means to just show you what I'm talking about because I have a project right here. I've created this project by pressing File New Project right here, and then I chose Ktor. Kotlin, of course, yes, of course, of course, of course. And then we have the engine right here, Netty, and here I could choose between code and Hakan, Hakan file, and I've, and I've actually tried to uh, to do it both. And then I could add the, also these uh, these modules right here, these plugins, and they are. I think that the UI um, is the thing that has changed most uh, throughout the the last couple of years. But the plugins, they are. Um, yeah, they just work. They're quite stable. Um, yeah, but they're here. And if you, again, if you're used to Spring, then these plugins will definitely seem familiar to you because it's kind of the same thing you do with Spring. Then you go and choose the, the modules that you want. And then at some point, then you press Finish right here. I'll press Cancel because I've already done that. And I have two examples run right here. First of all, uh, when you have uh, when, when you have created this project, then I would recommend you that the first thing you do is actually to write Gradle wrapper because uh, IntelliJ really likes to have a, a Gradle.properties file when it chooses which Gradle version that should be run and uh, oh should I use a wrapper etc etc etc. IntelliJ really likes that and you will not get that by default for some reason. So I would write Gradle wrapper and just to make sure that you're using the right version, you're not write Gradle minus version, and then um, 7.2 like this. And then we would make sure that we have the newest version inside um, yeah, the, the latest Gradle wrapper version. And I'll just show you where it actually is. If you go to Atelier settings, and then write Gradle right here, then you can see here we have use Gradle from, and the preferred way from for IntelliJ, and, and the way that works best with IntelliJ is to use the Gradle wrapper the promises file again in my experience so and it is also the default choice SDK 17 another thing um, Kato uh, actually compiles into Java 8 1.8 so you should also go press F4 on the project right there and then go to project and then yeah, okay you can actually choose yourself but I would actually I would I would actually set this uh, language level to 8 just to make sure Maybe it's not necessary, actually. Um, I just got some warnings in my Gradle output at some point. But um, yeah, let us try not to. Uh, we, we might we might regret it later, but uh, let us just try to to see what happens. Because now we will go to our application um, .kt file right here. Just if you're not that used to uh, to Kato and to Kotlin, let, let me just tell you that uh, we are actually not creating the application class right here. It is actually already created by Kato. We are just leeching off the uh, class, and then we are creating a new method called application.module right here. So we, we actually you can you can create new um, uh, methods on 
on the classes uh, already. You can overload. You can overload the classes with new uh, methods, and, and and that is exactly what we are doing right here. Off this, in this, when you are dealing with Kotlin, you always say function instead of method, just so you know. So here I have application dot module right here, and then I am uh, calling configure routing. And where is this? Where is this function? Uh, I, I cannot see this anywhere. That is because again, then we are overloading inside the plugins folder. Then we are overloading the routing. Uh, yeah, we have routing a KT file right here. And again, when you're dealing with Kotlin, you do not need to make a class that has the same name as your file. And uh, actually, we are not defining any class in this file at all. We are just overloading the application class with a new method called configure routing. So this is very weird if you come from the Java world. And I'm, here I'm actually I'm finding a route. Um, this is a trailing lambda, as it's called. This means that we're actually calling a function called named routing, and then we give it this training lambda as an argument. You do not need the round brackets if if it's uh, if it's the last uh, argument that you're giving, and if it's this if it's a lambda, then uh, that is expected by the function. Then you can just uh, leave it a training lambda as, as it's called. That means no round brackets right there. But that's Kotlin. So um, yeah, that let us focus a bit here, right? Uh, so right now I've, I've defined this uh, path right here, which is just forward slash. And we can just write something right uh, right here, uh, whatever we want to write. Hello, 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 and then a lot of characters. And of course, I can start my application. Um, if I start my application now, then um, then th this is actually, the, in my opinion, the right way to, to actually start your application. You In this situation right here, we are calling the engine main right, with arguments. And that means that we will actually also use the application.conf by default, unless we have chosen another config file we can choose we can set that of course uh, command line wise but uh, for, for, yeah, the default file name is application.conf but you can have of course all of your profiles as uh, as, as you know from spring just by uh, creating other files and you can call them whatever you want to to, to name them um yeah so then we have this is uh, yeah this is just how it the whole con file it looks a lot like uh, yeah, what does it look like? It's actually, uh, it's not JSON, it's a uh, Hokan file, It's but I have made another video about what Hokan is, but uh, it is, this is the format and, and you can easily read what which port you want to use. You can also see these are the modules that we want to activate. And right now we want to activate the application KT module. So that is that means that we actually, we are using the, the, the module inside application KT. Um, and add this right here. This is what we're defining right here. So this is the function that we have right here. And here we are configuring the routing. So if we did not have this line, then we would not configure anything. Enough talk. Let me just press play so you can see the application in up and running. Yeah. So. It is up and running, so I will just go to terminal and alright, curl, local hosts, local host, port 8080, oh, port 8080, like this. And then I get all of those weird characters that I typed just before. Cool. Now let us stop the server. Uh, let us stop the server, run, it's right there. And now I will use the other way. I will use the embedded server where we have all of our um yeah then we have then we have uh, then we have our configuration in here as you can see right now the port is set in here the host is set in here if you had more if you had more configuration if you had more options then you would also place it right there the the type of server is, uh, the server is placed right there and now i'm just commenting out the other stuff right here and now let us try to run this new main function right here instead and let us see if our application works again or oh, again I, we could make some smaller some minor changes. let us do that um just right hi 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 like this and i'll just restart the server you can also or you can enable something like the development mode so you don't have to restart your server all the time then um but i made another video about that so uh, what's that if you're interested in that um so we'll, i'll curl again and you can see here it says hi 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 or in danish he 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 it's a way here you can laugh uh, yeah that's what i had for you tonight
Thank you very much for watching. Have a great evening. Hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.